In this video, we will talk about Hadoop Distributed File System or the HDFS. HDFS is the default file system for Hadoop MapReduce framework. Let us understand what are the requirements and characteristics of MapReduce environment. MapReduce is usually dealing with very large files. The file size could be, I mean the data could be in petabytes and exabytes range. So because of the data, data volume, it has to be able to store the data in, in multiple disks or store the data across machines in a cluster. And also other key requirement for MapReduce is to deal with variety of data. So it is not just a structured data, like some data could be in a plain text, some data is in a video format, some are in audio format, some are like extracted from JSON, some are some uh, information or extracted from XML database, so things like that. And it has to be done in um, very cheap, you know, uh, uh, it, it has to be done at the cheap uh, cost and it has to be done very reliably. So these are the primary, uh, you know, factors that may be made HDFS as an uh, you know default file system because HDFS runs on cheap commodity hardware and unreliable machines it uses to uh, do the data storing right HDFS is scalable to petabytes or exabytes or even more um, so you can see the scalability factor in HDFS so it can scale to very large uh, you know files or very large data and data coherency is achieved because in, in HDFS you write the file once and read it many times as you want it. So this leads to high throughput in the um, HDFS. And another key difference in HDFS is that it moves the data processing task closer to the data node rather than pulling the data from the data node to the data processing machine. So to put it simply, if you're familiar with writing any application using you know, the traditional database, you usually pull the data from the database machine or database server and then do the processing in your local uh, machine or, or application and then store the results either back to database or you know locally. Uh, here in Hadoop, you push this data processing task very close to the data where it resides or in exact HDFS framework you send all the MapReduce talks to the node where the data resides. So you can imagine there are bunch of nodes sitting in your Hadoop cluster. So in each of the data nodes Hadoop MapReduce algorithm is executed. So that is how you know very large you know set of data is being processed parallelly and then the you know uh, results are aggregated and then reduced and then produced I mean and then the final output is you know in a very simple uh, uh, format right and uh, another important factor about HDFS is portable on many softwares and hardware so when you want to move between softwares and hardware it is easy to port we also talked about how HDFS uh, uses cheap commodity hardware and unreliable machines, but how it achieves that very reliable data processing. So to do that, the data block, the data has to be replicated in multiple machines. So by default in HDFS, each data block is stored into three different disks. So which means if you have one block of data, which is sized about 64 MB, so this particular 64 MB data block is going to be stored in three different nodes yes you, what you're thinking is that we are occupying more space so forget about the you know space because these days the disk space is you know very cheap compared to earlier days so that's one of the driving factor for big data to be achieved you know using open source framework like of Hadoop. also the HDFS you know it's a native file system so it doesn't require any uh, special uh, you know software or uh, anything to be installed like when you have it in uh, raids you know raid storage arrays so you, you like you know you have your raid uh, uh, 
system set up right so you don't need all of them here it, it it directly sits on the native file system so you can imagine this running on a linux machine it uses the same file system that you have already on your on your uh, linux machine right the way the data is you know split into multiple uh, machines is the file is split into multiple data blocks or so each block could be 64 mb or 128 mb and then all the blocks all the blocks are in master node from master node all the data blocks are distributed to various data nodes in the cluster network so in your hadoop cluster ideally you will have one master node and bunch of data nodes or bunch of slave nodes what you call as data nodes so but how do we know which block resides in which data node so that's the job of name node so it has the mapping of data node and the corresponding block stored right so you might ask okay what happens when the name node goes down yes it is a single point of failure at this stage of hdfs 1.0 version for hdfs uh, file system right i mean hdfs so another important factor is um, rack awareness so hdfs you know thinks that the entire rack could go away or entire rack could fail in your network so it distributes the you know data block accordingly in a way that even if the complete rack goes down the data is being reliably processed so all these are originally you know uh, found in google file system at uh, google so that has been extended and continuously various extensions are being added to the um, hdfs uh, hadoop framework to enhance these um, you know uh, features so one of the things i forgot to mention is that in hdfs once the data blocks are distributed you cannot update any data so once the data is distributed it is read only all right so there are solutions to it i think hbase is one of them so we will talk about that in the future video of hbase and for this video we will wind it up with this i hope you get a fair idea about hdfs if not to the uh, master level just a fundamental understanding thanks a lot for listening and watching thank you bye